Hey, it's Claire and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm really excited to share episode one of my new series called Let's Be Real. In Let's Be Real, I interview people who are trying to make a difference in our community and just generally have deeper conversations with people. In this episode, I talk to Vicky, the creator of Coffee Pod Creations. Coffee Pod Creations is a jewellery company, but with a twist. Vicky uses used coffee pods to make her jewellery. We talk about sustainability, everyday changes that we can all make to help the environment and business. So that's it from me. Let's get into my conversation with Vicky. Hi, I'm Vicky and I'm designer and maker of Coffee Pod Creations. I've been making jewellery since I was 16, mm -hmm. so over 10 years, and um, I like using different material. And I had been working in a bead shop, so mostly doing things like that, and a friend came back from Europe and told me that um, people were making things out of coffee pods. So obviously I was curious and I wanted to see what they were doing. I had to play around and kind of came up with the brooches and necklaces. So I grew up on the coast in the south of England, um, in Hampshire, uh, really nice by the seaside. Um, most of my family live in Australia, so I've just come back from Australia. Um, and yeah, when I went out there, I took my coffee pods with me. <laughs> and <laughs> well, I didn't take them with me, but yeah. I took my ideas and yeah. I made stuff out there. So yeah, it's kind of gone global. <laughs> I was wearing a necklace, not like this, it was a three strand one, but um, I'd just be walking around, people would be like, I really like your necklace. And I, I just remember being like really surprised because it was one of the first things that obviously then I had the story behind it. I'd be like, oh, thank you, they're made from coffee pods. And then everyone would be like, no way. So that kind of, and then people would be like, are you selling them? And so it was kind of more people would be asking me and I was like, oh, actually there's a market, people would yeah. buy them. So then um, I still have really good links with my um, old boss of the, the bead shop. And mm -hmm. although that's changed, she then said to me, you know, dropping it like, drop your stuff around and see if it sells and I did and then I kind of heard about craft markets and it just kind of snowballed on its own I didn't I just made the things which was great <laughs> there was no kind of big plan I just kind of I've because I've been making jewelry for so long um it was kind of like the chance to try something different you know it was, yeah and it's a different medium it's aluminium I hadn't really worked with it before obviously it's a waste product so using something that would otherwise be discarded yeah. and they come in a great range of colours which obviously helps mm -hmm. <laughs> so because of all of that I then and then when obviously people began to really like it um, then I began making more and obviously it's quite an easy thing to source and it's got more of a story because other jewellery doesn't you know okay they're beads maybe from a nice location but with coffee pods you've got you know, there's so much you can talk about just with one necklace or earrings mm. or something. I get given the coffee pods from either family or friends or customers. So generally they come along and they're kind of obviously dirty and used. Um, and you take out the, um, the foilage, the packaging, mm -hmm. take out the, the coffee granules. And don't worry, I don't waste the coffee granules, Claire. I put them on, <laughs> put them on the garden. Yeah. Um, and you had to like scatter it around because uh, obviously you don't want to give the plants the caffeine overdose. Yeah. Um, or make it too acidic the soil. So I do save the pods, um, granules, the grounds. Yeah. And um, then these get a really good thorough clean so that there's no coffee. I've had people smell them, but. There's, there's no smell of coffee, like that's well and truly gone. You're just left with the um, pod. It's mm -hmm. nice and lightweight, which is ideal for jewellery. It takes a long time. This is definitely not a quick process, um, but then I'm not doing it to... It's, I enjoy that process and it's more about saving the environment than making money quickly. So I do it, do it for some fair price as well, I think, for the time taken. I started off with um, necklaces like this one and it was probably more um, mature audience mm -hmm. um, or uh, you know more my mum's age range yeah. um, and then I got given a different type of coffee pod which 
it was still aluminium but it was a different make and um, I couldn't do the same technique that I did so mm -hmm. I had to come up with a new design so I came up with the earrings so, and then that I think was more a younger audience mm -hmm. uh, but I've had a real range so I've had um, a 12 year old girl came up to my market stall and she just got her ears pierced and she was like these are the first earrings that I've bought which aren't you know like the studs that you have to wear and she was really excited so that was really really lovely and I've had um, my cousin's kids have helped me and they're like six and three and two so the whole family like it's a really and then I've had you know great grandmothers buying stuff so it's, mm. it's really nice because I think the environment and jewellery is something which goes throughout the age range yeah for sure I agree I like meeting customers and yeah. chatting and sharing the story so I get most enjoyment yeah most people buy stuff from my from my markets so uh, particularly craft markets and I've got my Etsy site but I think for me it is that chatting to the customer and also and I'm sure you're well aware of it too there's not just the making of the product particularly with like online sales you've got to take good photos you've got to describe it in such a way and for me I just really enjoy making things and sharing things mm. I'm not so keen on the, the kind of other side of it but at the same time I do it is I always I always get really excited when I get make a sale online yeah like, Yay. <laughs> it, it really excites me yeah <laughs> definitely I love the earrings they're super high quality okay. and I really like that they're like genuinely wearable as well like you don't I get so many compliments about oh, them oh, and like people are always like oh my god they're upcycled you know and I think that's so cool like it's there yeah they are definitely something that I would definitely you know oh, wear. You. and I think particularly with earrings because aluminium is so lightweight you're not wearing something which drags your earlobes down or anything so it's quite a nice material and I, I want to have something which it doesn't look you know, like, I like there to be the, the, the surprise element when you get to tell someone that they are recycled. I want my items to be wearable and pretty and that there is that surprise that they are upcycled because I think there's, and I don't know why, there's almost that thing of, oh, if it's upcycled, it's going to be unattractive or not, not made to a very good quality and I, don't know why that's been I think because obviously you think maybe a child making something or you know a toilet roll I don't know yeah. but I, I think that things that are upcycled can be attractive and uh, pretty and stylish companies come up with different shaped pods and things mm -hmm. so then you have to adapt to that as well which is, so is it not only Nespresso no no they're like the largest one because you've got like George Clooney as your pin-up for Nespresso but there's um, about three or four different ones as well that all use aluminium. Then you've got some that use plastic, but sadly I can't do anything with the plastic because that's too rigid a structure and aluminium is quite malleable and quite movable, so mm -hmm. I can use that. There's lots of different elements in a coffee pod. Uh, you've got bits of plastic and the aluminium and obviously if you're gonna recycle it from scratch, you've got the coffee, which you've got to extra and they, they said that anything smaller than a coke can uses up more energy to reuse and clean it and everything so ideally it would be to stop using them and use a more uh, biodegradable alternative. I know the man that invented the coffee pod uh, left Nespresso and has started up his own biodegradable coffee pod but for some reason it's not promoted as much. Yeah. He realised the, the wastage that he'd, he'd caused, kind of realised the damage that would have and um, has come up with a more eco-friendly one. But obviously without the big backing of a large corporation, he's not done so well. But I feel like I know that Nespresso are trying to make a difference. They are introducing new things. You can get Swiss Army knives made from coffee pods and things. So they are teaming up, but it would be better if they found an even more sustainable solution. Yeah, like how would you feel if Nespresso <laughs> just said, we're not using pods anymore, like that's it, kind of, um, how would you feel? I think 
I would be pleased environmentally because I mean I don't I don't drink the coffee I have to add like a I'm not caffeine fueled okay um so you don't drink coffee uh, I have a bit but not yeah I would never I I don't drink any you wouldn't use like a pod yeah, no, no of course because it's yeah. kind of although I want the material I know people that do and I'm happy to collect them but yeah but that's not I, I'm doing it for the environmental thing the same thing even if it's just one pod yeah. at a time if big companies decided not to then that's great I'd be really happy and that would then I'd probably find something else and yeah have a go at making making something else or yeah just see what happened but at the end of the day it's just stopping stuff from ending up in landfill that is mm. the main issue I kind of had different types of customers so I had those that drink the pods and then like the fact it's been reused so mm. I have a lot of customers that bring the pods which is great um, and then I have lots of people that are don't drink the pods purely because they don't like the waste, they like the fact that it's made something from it. Yeah. Um, I think it, it, it's a starting point, it's a conversation, you know, um, but also it's kind of beauty in the everyday, so it's kind of, you know, I don't want to be too harp on about it to like, because obviously, it, you know, everyone makes choices. Would you say that that's a problem with um, like how we're facing sustainability because I like, as you know I'm vegan mm. and I find it frustrating how a lot of vegans are very militant and mm. I think it like turns people off and I think they just think I don't want to discuss anything with you because I don't want to be criticized mm. so I make a really big effort to kind of like be a lighthouse almost and just yeah. show how I'm living and the benefits rather than saying what you're doing is wrong and is yeah. that something you find? Well I think that, that's, yeah that's a really good point because it's that thing of um, everyone, you don't want, yeah you don't want to make it kind of, people have a persona of like what a vegan is or what an environmentalist, you know like the idea that you tie yourself to a tree and like, <laughs> or you jump or, you know like and, and I think there's lots of different ways and I I think just being aware like it's the main I keep going back to it but it's just this overconsumption that we just keep and I think when you start just being grateful for what we have or finding little things that you can do that change like if everyone you know like if, I mean now I know that people are changing their coffee pods so that they're like reusable ones mm -hmm. Um, but even then, like I know that people are in a hurry. Often, they're people that are offices yeah. drink the pods, and I think for them, it's a range of flavors. It's nice. It's quick. It's easy. I can see why they might want to use it. So yeah. I don't want to just be. Yeah, you want to enjoy the <laughs> enjoy buying the jewelry. You don't yeah, want yeah. to be um, given a lecture on what you could do better. But by having it, it might make you exactly. Yeah. For sure. I mean, I didn't really think, of, I don't use coffee pods myself, mm. but I think it definitely makes me, because like you say, like when I go into offices, they always have an espresso machine mm. and it does make you think, God, like, you know, and your jewellery definitely made me aware of that. So I think, yeah, even if you're not like ramming it down people's throats, like just yeah. by buying it, they're aware and, you, yeah. you know, it's a story, isn't it? So I think, yeah, and it's just... And it's just nice to, like, I, I enjoy making something from pretty much, like, nothing. And it's yeah. just, for me, that's a really fun bit. Like, where do you see Coffee Pod Creations this time next year? Oh, um, you know what? I, I don't know. I mean, you never know. Nespresso and all the big companies might stop making them. And yeah. then <laughs> my supplies will run out, although I've got quite a lot, so it should yeah, keep yeah. me going. I... Each year it's been different, it's, I mean I've only been doing it for two years, so uh, one year I was here and last year I was in Australia, so mm. there's been two different mm. things going on. Um, generally opportunities come up and then, you know, you just go with it. I did some workshops before and I really enjoy doing that, so I'd like to mm. do that again. But I just, I'm happy just making. Yeah. <laughs> making sure. and sharing. The thing that frustrates me is just the sceptics who don't, who don't realise that there is a need to act mm. and just make a difference. I'm not I'm not saying that you have to just if everyone does a little bit then even if say the environment nothing changes, you know, 
at least we're not overusing it's just yeah. this kind of um yeah, just make. I, th I think awareness is always a good thing. So it's the frustration in when people mm. aren't wanting to learn or yeah. change habits. Three easy things that anyone could do um, is awareness. So awareness where your food comes from. You don't have to be a vegetarian or vegan, but just being aware of what's on your plate is um, important, and the, the story behind how it got there. Saying no to coffee cups. Um, I am trying to think of something I can make out of them because mm. wastage is massive and I'm just amazed that companies are still using because it, it seems that everyone drinks from them and I think the tide is turning but I, I know that it's hard to, in my mind, if I have to, because you don't always have a coffee disposable one with you so often for me I just think well actually I don't need that coffee, I can get by, you know, like we don't have to be fueled the whole time by you know, like weighing up environmental and need. I think that's often it, isn't it? Just mm. making that choice and go, actually, you know, I don't need that. Yeah. Um, and that could be, it doesn't even have to be with coffee. It could be with anything. Mm. Um, other things, I got really into charity shopping. It's an interesting thing because people don't like the idea of it, but I'm like, well, you clean your clothes and that mm. becomes clean. I buy all my stuff in charity shops. So, that's amazing. Um, and I, I get quite going into shops now. I find it really overwhelming, like the the, the choice and the mass mm. consumption. Definitely, uh, fast fashion is something that I've been thinking a lot about, and mm. I think it's just so scary. Um, and yeah, I agree. It's really and overwhelming. Like denim denim trousers are like one of the big offenders for like energy usage, and I think. Like I popped into Oxfam today, and their stuff are like one pound, three pound, and it's not—they're not like don't, like it was from Zara. Like they're they're good Gap, you know, like really good makes, and it's not—it's just obviously someone's bought it, not wanted it, or not even worn it, and you think actually that's a really easy thing that mm. we can all do, and just be a bit more aware again. Awareness is key. Vicky, if people want to buy your products <laughs> or find you, where can people go to find you? Um, okay, Claire, they can find me on Etsy. Um, I have a shop there called Coffee Pod Creations. Um, I also have an Instagram and Facebook account, all called Coffee Pod Creations. Awesome. Okay, thank you.